Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special Bella Asks episode of The Ethicast. I'm your host, Bill Coffin. As longtime members of the Business Ethics Leadership Alliance, or Bella, know, we offer a special concierge service whereby Bella members who have any questions at all about ethics and compliance can send them to us, and then our internal experts will provide an answer and or direct them to a helpful resource for more information. Some of these concierge requests are rather specific to a particular company's needs, but many of them represent larger themes facing Bella members. So that's why we're using this show to thematically respond to high-level questions from the Bella community. And joining us to give those responses is Bella Chair Erica Salmon-Byrne. Erica, as always, it's terrific to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Bill, it is my pleasure to be here, as you know well, um, and as anybody who's been listening along to this series knows well at this point, we get hundreds of these Bella uh, concierge requests a year. And so when you're dealing with that level of volume, you can step back and, and start to look at the ways in which these questions start to bucket together. And uh, you know, if, if we've got answers, chances are good. Somebody out there is asking the same question, so it's incumbent upon us to share. An area where we get a ton of questions is on investigations, which is just oh a, yes. colossal, a colossal topic. It's probably yep. the biggest single category of Bella concierge requests we yep. get. It's just, I mean, it's just massive. Um, and we have a bunch of really great questions in that area. So I guess the first one I want to ask to you is, what is the right volume of investigations to achieve maximum positive impact, especially mm -hmm. when you consider companies that find themselves navigating the negative consequences that come with seeking a zero violations reported outcome and learn the hard way that that's actually hurting things like speak up culture? You know, it's 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 always so interesting to me, Bill, to to talk to compliance officers who are still getting this, what I consider to be really outdated point of view from either their management team or their audit committee chair or somebody else in leadership that says like, well, we just need to get the number of of, of uh, issues raised down. It's like, no, not really, um, because we, you want people raising concerns and questions, right? Um, I, I compliance and ethics is a new enough pro profession that I I always uh, encourage companies uh, and and people in the space to think about the lessons that have been learned from more uh, well established control functions. And here a great example is safety, right? Um, yes, your goal can be zero days without an incident, absolutely without question, right? Number of days without an incident, it's a great goal. But the way you get there is you see a huge spike in near misses, right? Because people are sharing what happened, they are raising a hand, they are saying this could have been bad and it wasn't, and here's how we kept it from happening again, or here's how we fix this particular issue. And so if you think about the near miss analogy in the ethics and compliance space, really what your goal should be is a bazillion questions and no substantiated cases of misconduct, right? Because everybody's asking you before they do the stupid thing. So mm -hmm. that is the that's the that's really the goal that we ought to all be aiming at. And so it isn't a zero violations goal by itself. It's a zero substantiated misconduct goal with lots and lots and lots of people asking questions of the right channels. Um, and the only way you get there is by people feeling comfortable saying that they need help. And that's where speak up culture comes in. So um, that that's you know sort of one of my first takeaways there. The other thing I would say is, for so many organizations, it's still a challenge to even figure out what people are asking questions about and, and of whom, right? This is something, Bill, you and I have talked about on, on other yeah. episodes of the Ethicast, but without consolidated case management and tracking systems that are really collecting inputs from managers, from human resources, from internal audit, from compliance, from a hotline, you have no idea what's happening across your business because what our culture data tells us is all of those channels are being used by employees. So if you're relying solely on what's coming in through your hotline, you are getting a fraction, like just a fra tiny fraction of what's happening across the business. And so before you even get to, to you know, zero substantiated misconduct cases, you've got to get your arms around the things that are coming in and the places they're coming in from and how you can actually start to, to identify trends and, and managers who need help. You know, when we look at that zero violations reported thing, it's easy to confuse a number with an outcome, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I'll tell you one of the things that I always come back to and you're going to laugh, um, but you won't be surprised because you know how much of a geek I am. Um, everybody in the world seen the movie Jurassic Park, right? Yep. 
I don't know if you've read the novel by Michael Crichton or not, but there's a great moment in the novel that wasn't captured in the movie where Ian Malcolm is like, you guys have got a velociraptor problem. How do you know the velociraptors aren't breeding in your park? And they say, well, we know because we track them. He goes, well, how do you track them? Well, look, there's this program and he punches in the numbers and see 40 velociraptors in the park, just like we thought. And he goes, no, 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 no. You have a program that's looking for 40 velociraptors. That doesn't tell you how many you've got in the park. And he expands the parameters. That's when they realize they have like 132 velociraptors in the park and a very big problem on their hands. And I come back to that a lot in terms of like, there's the outcome and then there's the number. And sometimes yeah. those get confused and they can actually work at cross purposes if you don't stop and take a step back and ask yourself, what exactly are we trying to achieve here? And, and what do those numbers mean? And how are they getting us to the outcome you want? Because the outcome you want is, I mean, if velociraptors are concerns, the outcome you want is the 132 velociraptors because right. people are people are saying like, hey, I am not sure about this thing that's happening in my part of the business. Um, but if you look at those issues as velociraptors, to continue to kill the metaphor, if you look at the if you look at that as velociraptors, then you want you want like zero velociraptors, right? Um, because it means you have to go do something with this thing that somebody has brought to you, and you know, kind of getting ourselves over this idea that an employee coming to you with a concern is a pain in the tail is another part of the problem, right? Um, getting managers to a place where they, they can see that information as a gift because it's something you can do something with, um, that, is, that is part of the challenge. Uh, so that people look at it, you know, and it's no longer a velociraptor, you know, trying to eat my lunch. It's a, it's a, I don't know, what's the opposite of a velociraptor? A pigeon? No, it's... <laughs> it's well, Erica, I apologize for dragging you into an unwanted conversation about dinosaurs, but I thank you, I thank you very, very much for bringing you on the show, you know, for coming on the show, and for lending us your insights and your understanding on an investigation. It's a massive topic, and there's so much to learn there. So, on behalf of Bella members and ethics and compliance professionals everywhere in the ethics ethics economy, thanks a whole lot for coming on. No, absolutely, my pleasure, and uh, and to all of you out there listening who are like, wait, you didn't answer my investigations question. Bill and I have actually broken this part into a series, so stay tuned for the next part. I'm Bill Coffin, and this has been a special Bella Asks episode of The Ethicast. For more episodes, please visit the Ethisphere YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ethisphere. And if this is your first time enjoying the show, please make sure to like and subscribe either on YouTube or on our podcasting platforms at Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon Music. Thanks so much in advance for subscribing. It really helps us out. To learn more about Bella, please visit bella.ethisphere.com to request guest access to the Bella Member Resource Hub and to speak with the Bella Engagement Director. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, remember, strong ethics is good business.